Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and this video is about what I would regard as simple basic maintenance steps to keep your printer happy, uh, keep it working well. This is the Epson ET8550. I've got um, similar stuff. This would reply to the Epson 8500 ink tank printer. It's just a shorter version that only does A4 letter size paper. Uh, I've produced in the past a very detailed written review and lots of videos about using the printer, setting it up and things like that. But this is really one of those sort of day to day, week to week, month to month things that you ought to consider just to keep your printer happy. Now, um, I would note that I've written this very detailed written review, but and I put notes to this in the notes of the video. In the written review, it also has links to all the different videos that I've produced related to the 8500 and 8550. There's quite a lot of them. So if you're interested in that, also I've produced lots of printer profiles. Uh, they're listed in the written review there and they're available on request. Now, keeping your printer happy. The basic thing to do every few weeks is the nozzle check. On this you do it from here, from go to the screen here and go to the maintenance menu and there is a nozzle check and it will print off, and I just printed this one off here, um, it will print off a sheet like this. This is on plain paper which is just loaded in the tray here. You don't need to do any of these tests on fancy paper, this is just sort of basic copier paper. It has a pattern at the top which shows that all the nozzles are firing properly um, it has information about the printer, such as serial number, firmware version, things like that. It tells you how many prints your printer has done. So, you know, if you're curious as to how much you're using the printer, keep these as you run them off and then you can have a look. And if you're really that minded, you can build a spreadsheet and do graphs and things like that. Um, not that I do, by the way. Um, there's your information. Tells you also when it was first time printed. This particular one was uh, started up the first time, 2023, uh, October um, of that month, the year of 2023. So that's that. What about if that one doesn't, if there, there are breaks in the nozzles? Or you get a printing problem and you think, um, I better have a run, run this and it shows problems. What about cleaning? The thing to remember about inkjet printers is they like to be left. So if you've moved your printer much, if you, it's been in the back of a car or it's been bumped around or anything like that, leave it to settle. Um, they've got liquids running through very small pipework. Things need to settle out in it. But if you get a problem with your nozzle check, run a cleaning cycle. You run that also from the uh, screen here. Now, when you run the cleaning cycle, it will judder the head back a few times. It will exercise all the nozzles and it will hopefully then allow you to produce another second nozzle check here. And that should hopefully be fixed. What happens though if it's not fixed? Well, if you've got a channel out, check that your inks are actually full. Remember that these printers have no way of knowing exactly how much ink is in each tank here. So check the levels. You do need to check them rev regularly just to make sure the printer doesn't think what it thinks the level is and it hasn't got out of sync with the actual levels. You top them up here just with the bottles. Ooh, it always does something if you lift to lift bits like that. Yes, yeah, go back to sleep. Anyway, keep your ink levels proper. If you have a second failed nozzle check, don't immediately do another one. Give it a few minutes. Let things settle down. Run a cleaning cycle after a few minutes and do it again. If there's no change, resist the temptation to do more cleaning cycles, more nozzle checks. In general, if a fault doesn't like that, doesn't fix itself in two, three cleaning cycles, any additional cleaning cycles are just wasting ink. Leave it for a few hours. 
Go and do something else. Yes, I know this probably almost always happens where you're on a deadline and you need to print. Um, you just have to decide whether the print job that you need for it is going to be affected by the nozzle problems that you've identified. Leave it. Um, printers like this, almost every time where I've had a problem like this, I've left them overnight and the next morning it's been absolutely fine. So don't do too many nozzle checks. Um, how often should you run a nozzle check? Um, as normally, I reckon, as I say, every, for a printer like this, two to three weeks, monthly perhaps, if it's working well. Um, it, there's no need with a printer like this to do, that, do anything like that weekly. Uh, for a big printer like this Epson P5000 that's sitting here, this is a commercial printer. It expects to be used every day. If you don't use it regularly, then I, ex I have a, a diary reminder that pops up and tells me every week to switch this on and do a quick test on it. And that keeps a printer like that healthy. You might want to set a diary reminder every month or something like that, just in case you haven't used it. Now, printers like this are much, much better at being left alone than big commercial printers like this one here. But even so, exercise your printer, that will generally keep it, keep it healthy. Another aspect to this is alignment checks. Now, I'm not going to run this here because it takes a few minutes, uh, but you can run a head alignment from the maintenance menu here. It's something you should do when you first set the printer up. Um, later on, it's something that doesn't need regularly doing. Um, most printers, I would recommend doing it almost as an annual thing. Depends on the printer. Uh, ones like this big P5000 here, I do it every so often, every six months. If it hasn't changed from where it was before, then I won't bother doing it perhaps for a while. But Ones like this are built very differently. This has massive great steel bars and bearings in it for supporting all the moving parts. Whereas on this one, we have pressed steel work um, and there are no sort of roller bars and things like that on this. So this is a very different product to something like this. So you treat it different. This is a consumer printer. It's meant to last. It's meant to be relatively simple. This one used every day. This one, if you used it at the rate these ones are used, you might wear it out in a year or two. Very big difference between sort of consumer grade stuff, commercial grade stuff. Right, so set at the print setup. It's one of those things we go through, you run it off, uh, you have to match patterns. It can be a bit tricky to do. Um, I've done a video about the importance of actually doing it, which looks at more general. It's something that you do with a printer like this when you set it up and occasionally elsewise. I might, for a brand new printer, do it when it's set up, and then the first time I need to replace many inks, need to top up inks, uh, indicates I've printed a fair bit, do it again just to see if anything's changed. If it hasn't changed well, I might remember to do it in a year's time, or I might not, uh, just depends on you know, the printer. If it's an office printer that you're using it for. Remember, this has got a copier on it as well. Uh, this particular one I know is used as a home printer. It gets used for all sorts of stuff. My feeling is that uh, the use that this particular printer gets, nobody's going to notice if it's slightly misaligned. If you're printing photos, particularly large photos on it, then that misalignment can make a bit more of a difference on it and it might make a difference there. Right, what about some actual cleaning? Now, up front, there was a video I did, and I'll put a link to it. Uh, there's, there's a video I did about cleaning underneath the print head and various things. That is the sort of thing, this other video, and I put plenty of warnings in it saying, do this at your own risk. That is a much more invasive measure in that you have to stop the print head to unpower the machine, various things. What about if you're not needing stuff like this. And this is where you get ink clogs building up so that you get smears and things on sheets. What about general cleaning? Well, printers like this don't like dust in them. So uh, I would uh, give this one uh, a blast through with some air just to keep some uh, dust out of the way. Some people say you shouldn't do that because it blows dust into places where it isn't meant. Um, I think that it just helps keep it a bit clean. But yeah, that, that's just me. More importantly, we have the question of borderless printing. How much borderless printing do you do on your printer? Uh, 
The biggest source of a mess inside printers comes from doing lots of borderless printing. It produces an overspray. You get droplets of ink, they spread around and they collect. Now, there is a pad runs along the bottom of this which collects borderless overspray. Now that pad is not a user replaceable item. The printer has a limited amount of capacity for borderless printing and picking up overspray. It's quite a lot. Now, I believe it's a moderate proportion of borderless printing in your printing for the expected five year life of the printer. Now that's thousands and thousands of prints. But borderless does cause a mess on the pad down the bottom here. And the easiest way just to check whether it's of that is I've some kitchen roll, kitchen towel here. And I just pop that on the pad down the bottom here. Um, I just push it on it. And there we go. We've got some ink and yeah, it's not much. This hasn't been used that much for it, but there is some ink spray there. Don't bother too much about cleaning elsewhere. In particular, there's a metal bar that runs along the back here. You'll notice that's got a sort of greasy deposit on it. It's a lubricant. Uh, this metal bar that runs at the back of the printer is actually where the print head rolls along. So it needs lubrication. Uh, so don't touch other things around it. Essentially, if you don't know what something is, leave it well alone. That's why I said this particular bit of cleaning here that's in the other video, uh, that is something to be careful about using. So all I need to do here is just check, have a look that it looks clean. Um, there we go. A little bit of ink pickup in there. Um, and let's say this kitchen towel is fine for, for doing it. You should need to do no more than that. If you've converted one of these printers to using alternative inks, uh, like using dye sub inks or other things. Bear in mind those inks are very different in their characteristics to the inks that normally go through this. Uh, expect ink build up, expect cleaning problems. Inks like that can seriously limit the lifetime of your printer. Um, basically, it's, it's why I haven't tested stuff. This is a, a, a printer I've borrowed off Epson to have a look at some stuff. But in general, if you start putting third party inks that you don't know, put pigment inks in and say dye sub inks and things like that, um, I won't say you're asking for trouble, but you are. Um, and expect an effect on the lifetime of the printer, no matter what the ink suppliers say. Once you start using stuff like that, you've got no idea how the things will interact and how they'll affect stuff down the bottom here. So. Um, Basic cleaning, cleaning the pad. If you really need it, so we've got the video about cleaning underneath the print head, but that's a bit more effort. Um, other than that, it's a very reliable printer. Um, it just works. Um, excellent quality printing. There are no significant usability problems that I know of, but it just helps keeping it clean, keeping your eye on the nozzle check, and keeping it working well. Anyway, I hope that's of some help. Uh, please feel free to ask questions if you want um, and uh, let me know how things go. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.